The Pioneer League features teams from all across the country, the, the USA, and although the stadiums aren't big or flashy, there certainly are some interesting ones among them. So here are the Pioneer League football stadiums. Bailey Memorial Stadium, Presbyterian Blue Hose. We start off with a very simple stadium that's very easy on the eye, a common theme throughout the conference. The main stand has an old school design with plenty of brick used. Other than that, most of the field is surrounded by a grass berm, and beyond that, forest, which makes for a very tranquil setting. <laughs> that was loud. Oh, did I mention that there's a, there's a cannon that goes off every time the home team scores? So, be prepared for that. Brown Field, home of the Valparaiso Beacons, who are obviously colorblind. The stadium opened over 100 years ago, making it over 100 years old. And I can't imagine it's a whole lot different to what it was back in the early days. Obviously, the field was natural grass and the track was probably cinder back then. But it hasn't really needed to expand. The basketball arena that sort of overshadows the stadium actually has a slightly larger capacity, which has got to be rare. Uh, what to say about the stadium? Uh, there's a fairly new scoreboard, that's, uh, that's brown. The, ends, the end zones are brown too. Yeah, let's move on. Salic Bowl, Butler Bulldogs. Now, this is an interesting design. Despite the name, it's not an actual bowl in the traditional sense. I mean, clearly it's not an actual ceramic bowl, but you know what I mean, it's not a traditional bowl stadium. But the landscaping forms a sort of amphitheater, with the main stand being built into the earth. The eastern side of the stadium, however, is made up of, well, a small stand, but beyond that, apartment buildings, which makes for a very interesting look. I like that, though. I also like the way the scoreboard sits atop the hill. Drake Stadium, Drake Bulldogs. I want to make it clear that the stadium and the school are not named after the famous musician that goes by the same name. You know the one I'm talking about, he rose to fame on that Nickelodeon show back in the day. Oh, I was thinking of Drake and Josh, but that works even better. It's home to the historic Drake relays, which have been taking place here basically since the stadium opened in the 1920s. Combine that with its horseshoe shape and wraparound brick facade, it's basically the Franklin Field of Iowa. Just not quite as old and not as grandiose, but it does have a more distinctive blue track which earns it the nickname, the Blue Oval. Not the most imaginative name, come to think of it. Jane Stadium, Moorhead State Eagles. It's the seats that are blue this time, a very garish shade of blue. Contrasted with the lush greenery that surrounds the players makes for a very visually stimulating stadium. However, despite being one of the newer stadiums in the conference, the facilities are a little dated, and it certainly shows, on the outside in particular. But I think they are considering renovating the stadium. I'm not 100% sure it will actually happen, but it looks promising. O'Shaughnessy Stadium, St. Thomas Tommies. O'Shaughnessy has to be the most Irish name there is. Ooh, a purple track. That's nice. Uh, but we're not here for the purpleness of the track or the Irishness of the name. It's a lovely little stadium. The exterior of the main stand has a bit of a medieval look to it, matching the campus. But I like the other side of the stadium even better. There's some unusual elevated seating. But the backdrop of the athletic complex, the brick buildings and the chimney, I just love it. Looks great. Richardson Stadium, Davidson Wildcats. A lot of old stadiums in this conference, and most of them quite simple. This would have to be the most simple of the lot though, just the one stand. But the building behind the north end zone complements the stadium quite nicely, and there are plenty of trees about the place, so it seems like a splendid place to watch football. Just not much to say about it. Speck Martin Stadium, Stetson Hatters. It's an off-campus stadium, so the architectural style of the buildings doesn't have to match that of the campus. Instead, it matches the adjacent ballpark. A nice change up from the typical college aesthetic. And it's not quite a cannon, but they do have a huge bell that they ring. Which... 
Yeah, a cannon's better, but this won't damage your ears. Oh, and I never thought I'd bring up anything to do with Adam Sandler, but the stadium featured in The Waterboy. Whether that's something to brag about or a stain on its history is up to you. It's a solid stadium regardless. Tennis Stadium, Marist Red Foxes. Just a stone's throw from the Hudson River is what appears to be a very well polished stadium, if that's the right way to describe it. Despite having opened in the 60s, it was basically completely rebuilt in the mid 2000s, where it gained that rather nice grandstand to the east, which features a stone exterior and even some luxury suites, from which you can see the Hudson River if I'm not mistaken. On the other side, it's all lawn seating. No complaints from me. Torero Stadium, San Diego Toreros. It's a stadium in high demand. As well as the Toreros football and soccer team, it hosts a professional soccer team and a professional rugby team as well, and is set to host a professional women's soccer team in the future. I can understand why they want to play here, it's a pretty cool stadium. There's clearly a lack of flat land available on the campus, so they've had to dig in deep into the earth, which gives the stadium a very unique look, and on top of that, literally, is a building including some press boxes that feature some ornate decorations that just remind you that it's a Catholic university. But it's still a nice addition. Welcome Stadium, Dayton Flyers. We've seen a few stadiums like this in the conference, but there's just something about the fact that it's in the middle of a parking lot, rather than nestled amongst a campus that detracts from it. In a fully enclosed stadium, it wouldn't make as much of a difference, but in a stadium like this, I'm not a fan. It does have one thing going for it though, and that is that it's the largest stadium in the conference. A huge 11,000 spectators are welcome. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.